Here we are now, both players coming in team preview. It looks like Hirofumi has already made his selection. <laughs> he has done his homework. He knows what he wants to do against Naoto's team. Of course, Naoto, as you mentioned, using this team that uh, is similar in composition to what he used at the Japanese National Championships. Both players did not actually face off against each other there, but clearly Hirofumi has done his homework. Yeah, a big question here is, what speed control are both players going to opt for? Is it going to be the Trick Room? Is it going to be the Tailwind? Trick Room probably a little bit easier to bring if you expect your opponent to bring the Tailwind. I think uh, Tapu Fini here, an absolute essential Pokemon for a Nyoto to bring because that's probably his best means of dealing with the opposing Umbreon. Umbreon actually gives a Stack Attack, uh, Groudon, Hunala, and Salamence an immense amount of trouble. So I, I think a lot of this obviously will dictate uh, you know, how the Groudons match up against each other, but uh, Tapu Fini and Umbreon will both be critical Pokemon for the trade here. So, Naito taking a little bit more time to decide here. I think uh, we'll also have to see how the Groudon speeds match up against each other in this kind of weird composition where you have both Trick Room and Tailwind. Often these speed stats are going to be very specific. Here we go. Both players have made their selections and they're getting ready to jump into the match right now. Give it up for both of these players here. Here we go. This is it. This match is going to determine the world champion here at the VD in VGC Masters as both players now get ready to send out their leads. Uh, Hirofumi leads with Groudon and Duskmane Necrozma as Naoto leads with the Salamence and Lunala. So Salamence and Lunala here having the option to potentially go for a Trick Room or a Tailwind initially. A big Intimidate off there on the opposing Groudon as well definitely makes its firepower significantly reduced. So uh, there's so much speed control here out on the field immediately. Some of the strongest Pokemon on both players' side. Of course, the Lunala does have the advantage in terms of having a big, super effective attack off against the opposing Necrozma. I do have to watch for a potential Moongeist Beam. We've seen throughout the course of this tournament, it's not the Z move there on Lunala. A Salamence here won't be able to do very much damage against the Necrozma, but it also doesn't worry, have to worry too much about attacks from the Groudon. A Dragon Claw's attack that we've actually seen on a lot of Groudons throughout the course of the tournament, but uh, with the Intimidate, shouldn't be able to do too much damage. I think Nyota here might consider just swapping out immediately uh, setting up Tailwind in front of a Necrozma, which can Trick Room, is definitely pretty risky. So uh, maybe switching out into the Groudon in the back. Yeah, and Groudon on Hirofumi's side will switch out, does not want to stay in, take some big damage from that Salamence or that oh, Here there comes it is. the Umbreon! Umbreon <laughs> takes the field here. Oh boy, the crowd favorite as Salamence reacts to it. Uh, it's it's going to go ahead and Mega Evolve here. So going to get that aerial ability and be able to dish some big damage out over onto the opposing side of the field. Dustman and Krozma just wants to protect, does not want to get hit with a possible Moongeist beam here from this Lunala, as Lunala does land an attack into that Dustman and Krozma's protect. And here comes Salmas with a Hyper Voice, hits into that Umbreon, does no damage at all. Umbreon is so bulky. Lunala actually opted oh, yeah. the Moongeist beam, of yeah. course, Salamence being faster with the Mega Evolution. So Lunala coming out, launching Moongeist beam, and Umbreon really taking those attacks quite nicely there. No uh, damage Nyoto, at all. Yeah, Nyoto really hoping to chunk the Groudon immediately, of course, because this is kind of a Groudon mirror match. Being able to deal a lot of damage to your opponent's Groudon immediately, especially when it's intimidated, is obviously quite good. But Hero Fumi not falling into that, switching in the Umbreon, which takes both of those attacks quite nicely. Now Umbreon actually putting on a lot of offensive pressure with potential foul plays on either Pokemon. No speed control coming out, and Salamence now definitely in kind of an awkward spot. Won't be able to do too much damage with the Typer Voice for Double Edge just to switch it out. And I think Groudon definitely an excellent Pokemon here to put on pressure with Crestus Blades. Groudon's Crestus Blades will be able to do some major damage to that Dust Main Necrozma over on Hero Fumi's side, but does also grant that Umbreon access to uh, the Sunlight, which will allow Moonlight to heal back so much more HP then Nyoto would actually enjoy seeing that Umbreon heal him back. Here we go now, moving into the rest of the turn. Lunala, again, content to go for a Moon Geist Beam here, hitting down what should be that Dustmane and Krozma to get some damage out onto that side of the field, and does good damage oh. right there. Dustmane and Krozma hangs on with about 25% of its hit points remaining, and here comes a berry <laughs> from this Lunala. That is gonna be a Cobra Berry, reducing the amount of damage that this foul play is gonna do with that Chow That does nothing for a quadruple uh, super effective hit there as Dustman and Necrozma now gets to move, sets up a Trick Room here. Yeah, so the Trick Room goes up, making the dynamic of this matchup really interesting. We'll have to see how all of these Pokemon are trained and which one will go first. I mean, the, the key thing right now is that Groudon is in quite a good spot. We'll be able to do a lot of damage with Preston's Blades. 
a hero for me might need to, for example, double up into the Groudon if he wants to potentially uh, kind of take out the threat, but I'm not even sure something like a Foul Play and a Photon Geyser will knock it out. Really would come down to how these Pokemon, of course, are trained. Uh, that being said, Necrozma is also often carry Earth Power, so maybe the combination of those two will be enough. Uh, once again, the key question is how slow is this Groudon? Can it actually take advantage of the Trick Room and maybe uh, get an attack off before the Umbreon and the Necrozma move? So uh, it'd be really critical to see how these Pokemon are trained and will definitely dictate the rest of this matchup in terms of whether either trainer kind of wants to set up trip room. Here we go now, moving into the next turn. Lunala does not want to take another foul play from that Umbreon, switch it out, trying to pivot and deal with this trick room as Tapu Fini takes the field. And as you mentioned, Aaron, that Tapu Fini is going to be big to try to deal with this Umbreon on Hero Fumi's side. All right, who moves first here? Looks like it will be the Umbreon using Snarl. Going to drop the special attack stat of the ground with a critical hit being dealt over there on the uh, on Nyota's side of the field. Uh, that's going to be important to that Tapu Fini. Won't be dealing as much damage, but that Groudon we've seen before. And here it is, a huge Fire Punch into that Dustman and Kozma gets the KO. And, you know, that's a physical Groudon, so that Snarl's not going to matter at all. Yeah, so opting for the Fire Punch instead of the more risky Press Display just to get some guaranteed damage off. It's a big knockout there onto the Necrozma. Tapu Fini actually in a decent position right now. The Snarl is, however, a big deal, means that uh, Moonblast probably won't be able to knock out the Umbreon on the opposing side. We have seen the Z move on the Tapu Fini, though, so perhaps the Farium Z will be able to still pick up the KO. That being said, I expect Umbreon to be able to outspeed the Tapu Fini here under Trick Room, so maybe after another Snarl, uh, the Umbreon actually could even take a Z Fairy move from the Tapu Fini. Uh, Groudon switching on the opposing side. I mean, Press this Blaze right now just hits everything for so hard on both sides. That's a lot of... Uh... That's a lot of damage that Umbreon has already taken. Of course, Snarl does drop that special attack stat, but even then, a Twinkle Tackle is going to be dealing a lot of damage as Nyoto's Groudon switches out. Yeah, so not wanting Salman to... takes the field here. Yeah, not wanting to take a press this blade there, perhaps knowing that his Groudon is faster. And Just the Moonlight, though. Oh, oh no, the Moonlight, yeah. <laughs> That's the Moonlight. Wrong Moon move from my uh, perspective there, as Umbreon heals back to full health as... Yep, and Nature's Madness from that top of Fini lands into Hirofumi's Groudon dealing 50% damage right there, and wow. Here's a Presto's Blades from that Primal Groudon, connects with that Tapu Fini, does good damage right there, bringing it down to a little under 50%. Yeah, really good damage there, actually. Another Presto's Blades will get the knockout there, and that is absolutely crucial. Important to note, though, that the Tapu Fini, of course, outspeeding the Groudon here under Trick Room. So, uh, able to get a big attack off of here, but you can see how the Umbreon has really poisoned itself for success, especially after getting that initial Snarl off. Top of Fini goes down, I think it's going to be really, really difficult to deal with the Umbreon. And because the Snarl went off against Papu Fini, it's really not hitting for very much damage right now. Uh, with Trick Room being up, Salamence also kind of in an awkward spot. Sure, you can go for a Hyper Voice, but it's really uh, nothing to deal with this Umbreon right now. And uh, yeah, the Umbreon in a perfect position to succeed. Ooh, Hero Fumi here reacting, and it looks like it's going to be a foul uh, uh, play into that Salamence slot. Good damage dealt over to that. Oh, and a, it's the Bot Dragon Claw! Hangs on. So Salamence hangs on with just two hit points here and uses Hyper Voice connecting with that Groudon and that Umbreon. Uh, some damage over there, a critical hit, I believe, onto that Umbreon slot. I mean, that's still an excellent read there. Doesn't get the knockout onto Salamence, but I mean, Salamence retaliates with a Hyper Voice and it really just doesn't do very much damage. Once again, uh, with Trick Room still being up, the Groudon on Hero Fumi's end has so much control right now. You can just click press this place, get some guaranteed damage off. Uh, the Umbreon can do so many different attacks right now. It can choose to heal. Like, Tapu Finish is in such an awkward spot. You want to switch it off, of course, because you want to reset that special attack drop and hope to eventually get a big Farium Z into the Umbreon slot later. But if you switch out, whatever comes in is going to take a big press this blades. Obviously, Groudon doesn't want to take that because it's super effective. So maybe you bring in the Lunala, but I mean, the Salamence really just isn't able to do very much right now. And yeah, Tapu Fini does pretty much have to switch out there, but whatever comes in is not going to appreciate taking a lot of damage here. Yeah, and Lunala is the only Pokemon that can come in and take that switch as Groudon on Hero Fumi's side switches out as well. Hero Fumi switches in the Tapu Lele, changing the terrain uh, as well as boosting psychic type moves. So that's one of the things about Tapu Lele. Uh, great move right here from Hero Fumi to switch in that Tapu Lele. A lot of these Tapu Lele tend to carry Choice Scarf, and with Trick Room expiring at the end of this turn, Tapu Lele will be able to have a speed advantage here. <laughs> and here is a Snarl from that Umbreon. Gets in that <laughs> Salamence Protect, drops Lunala's special attack, which Lunala enjoys using here. And oh boy, Trick Room expires. 
Uh, Hirofumi really managing this game super, super nicely. Hit, I think, very difficult to kind of maneuver with a uh, Trick Room and Tailwind team. And this Umbreon really doesn't care whether it's going first or last because it's just not taking any damage right now from the uh, Salamence nor the Lunala. Maybe a Double Edge would be able to do enough, but I really don't think so based off how this Umbreon looks like it's trained. And it just really, really great uses of Snarl, Foul Play, and uh, the Moonlight just really great adjustments here. And so Tapu Lele obviously also exerting on an immense amount of offensive pressure. Uh, Umbreon has also been able to force Tapu Fini out on the field, so it's just really not threatened immensely right now and can really just choose to do whatever it wants. Yeah, and Lunala, of course, to protect, does not want to take a, another attack from that Umbreon uh, foul play or even a snarl. And here's a high kick from that Tapu Lele connects with that Salamence and gets the KO all two hit points right there as Umbreon uses his turn to attack into that Lunala. Yeah, so Tapu Lele revealing that it is quite speedy, confirming that it probably is that Choice Scarf item. Uh, Choice Scarf makes a lot of sense, especially given the Necrozma team. Uh, it, you know, we didn't see the Ultra Necrozma come out this game, but of course that is one thing that is very powerful, especially with that Z move. So uh, Choice Scarf Tapu Lele, very common on these team compositions, but Hirofumi has managed this so well. I mean, setting up Trick Room, getting Umbreon in, in the perfect position, getting these snarls and foul plays off, and there is just nothing to deal with the Umbreon. Yeah, Groudon comes out, but once again, Lunala can't hit the Umbreon, and Groudon maybe can go for a press this blaze or a fire punch. I don't even think that's enough to get the knockout. And of course, Umbreon can just consistently heal. So it's Umbreon really the key Pokemon in this matchup. And the main thing for Nyoto is he wasn't able to get the top Lufini in on a position where he can just threaten with this Varium Z immediately. So, uh, you know, can't even bring out the top Lufini right now because it might just faint to a Psychic from the top of Lele. Yeah, and this uh, top of Lele has the option to go for a powerful Psychic into that Groudon slot. Yeah. Deal some massive damage as well in this Psychic train. So, Hirofumi is playing the board position game so well right now, being able to kind of have this slow Pokemon out on field to be able to take advantage of Trick Room and also have this fast Pokemon take advantage of when that Trick Room expires. Yeah, so let's see if there's a Protect coming out from the Groudon right now, maybe to bypass the Psychic Flat was definitely a potential attack. Not at all. Primal Groudon takes the field instead on Hirofumi's side as Lunala switches out, uh, resetting the terrain for Naoto's team. So the Misty Train is going to take effect here. Uh, Probably allowing Groudon on Naoto's side to be able to survive a psychic from that top of Lele, but here comes oh, no a protect. fire punch. Oh, into that Groudon slide. Oh, not even enough to get the KO. Big survival right there, and a foul play from the Umbreon does so much damage to that Groudon. Yeah, but the upside here is that Nyoto actually has finally managed to get the top Lufini in exactly in the position that he wants. Now can threaten with a potential Z move into that Umbreon slot. I will have to see which Groudon is faster between the two here as well. That could be absolutely critical. Oppressive's Blades would be so big on either side right now. Uh, if Hirofumi's is, of course, faster, might just be able to get the knockout on both. Of course, uh, I mean, there's so many dynamics going on here, but Umbreon now finally in a position where it actually is threatened. Of course, won't be able to do very much damage against the opposing Tapufini as well. So we'll have to see which Groudon is faster here. This is going to come down to this. This is going to be a huge swing of momentum depending on whose ground is able to move first and <laughs> who's going to be able to knock out each other's Groudons first. And here we go, coming into this turn, Groudon on Hero Fumi's side protects itself, doesn't want to play a possible speed game here, and Groudon hits into Hero Fumi's... No, yeah, oh. Groudon actually hits into the Groudon, uh, the Groudon on Hero Fumi's side, and here's a Twinkle Tackle from that top of Fini. Yeah, so looking like uh, trying to just go for the safe target, not opting to risk a potential Preston's Blades here. Barium Z does come out. That is the best move to deal with the Umbreon, so... Uh, yeah, no switch out from the Umbreon there into that Lele means that it probably will go down here. Let's see if it will do enough damage. I expect it to. No snarls onto Naoto's side of the field. Let's the Twinkle see. Tackle connects yeah. with that Umbreon, gets the KO, so... That <laughs> pesky Umbreon has been knocked out. And again, Naoto going for a Fire Punch here, just trying to target down in that ground, knowing that that Twinkle Tackle is about to KO that Umbreon anyways. Let's see though, that is the Choice Scarf Top of Lele now returning to the field and having Psychic Terrain pressure, so able to uh, do so much damage. Uh, we'll see what attack it chooses to lock itself into. Psychic probably the best one, but of course Lunala in the back does resist it. And once again, who is faster here between the Groudons? That is going to be a big, big question. But Lunala still in the back with a fair amount of health. If you lock yourself into Psychic, uh, you know, Psychic probably won't be able to knock out the Lunala in the back. Lunala can retaliate back with something like a Moonguys Beam. So Naito has actually been able to claw out of what looked like a pretty difficult position by bringing out the Tapu Fini in the perfect position and whittling away in terms of damage.
boy, this is a tough spot. I mean, this Groudon is so threatened by this Tapu Lele on the other side of the field, so it might not even come down to the Groudons. Nayato actually might have to try to think about how he can position himself to maybe preserve this Groudon for later on. He's thinking so hard right now as that timer ticks and ticks away. This is going to be such a big turn here. Yo, Groudon protects himself, does not want to take that sidekick from the Tapu Lele at all as Tapu Lele uses a move into that Groudon protect. And here comes oh. Hero Fumi's Groudon. Looks like the Groudon's Press faster. Plays. Yeah, it's going for Preston's place, and it connects with the Tapu Fini. That's absolutely huge. Yeah, so that connects with that Tapu Fini and gets the KO from that range. So now it's down to both these players' last Pokemon. And this exciting game one already, Aaron. Yeah, I mean, absolutely critical there, of course, with the Groudon Hero Fumi's end is actually faster than the Tapu Fini on Nyoto's end. Uh, of course, Groudon, a naturally faster Pokemon, but very difficult to know based off the team compositions here. So that's a very, very big piece of information. Lunala comes out now. Moongeist Beam, of course, will be able to just get the knockout onto Groudon. And depending on how the Tapu Lele is trained, might just also be able to get the one hit KO there. Uh, Groudon, having, Groudon having protected last turn means that uh, Tapu Lele can just launch an attack freely into that slot, uh, depending on what it locked itself into. The thing is, if it is Psychic, I mean, Lunala here feels like it's gonna force the target down the Groudon. You don't wanna eat a Preston's Blades, but Hirofumi, of course, could predict that protect the Groudon, and then you force the 2v1 position in which you win. So let's see, is Groudon, Groudon gets protecting? The protect. oh. He gets the double protect! Oh my goodness! Oh! And uh, Tapu Lele forces Psychic in that Groudon's protect. Lunala targeting, though! Lunala uses Moon Geist Beam here. What is this Moon Geist Beam going to target down? Some damage. Oh, oh they the Groudon. Groudon. So safe play right there, yeah. So. Smart play right there, just get the KO on that Groudon immediately. Yeah, I mean, that's what we were talking about, that right here. Fumi could have potentially baited out that Moon Guy's Beam by going in for Protect that turn. Then you force the 2v1 position. Maybe two Psychics under Psychic Train is enough to take it, but a big, big double Protect there. I'm not actually sure it ended up mattering there because it, Moon Guy's Beam might just be able to knock out the Lunala. Let's see how much Psychic would have done to Lunala. Oh, right there, but Lunala hangs on, so another Psychic is what is needed to be able to get the KO as Lunala's Moon Guy's Beam now. Crashes into that Tapu Lele, gonna deal some big, super effective damage here. And Tapu Lele just outright gets one hit KO now. So takes game one in a thrilling set. Wow, that was intense. That was such a good game. It looked like Hirofumi had kind of, uh, you know, board control right from the beginning, being able to set up that trick room. Umbreon coming in at the perfect position, being able to do all this damage with Snarl and foul play. But Nyoto recognizing, I do need this Tapu Fini to threaten the Umbreon and play the game to a position where he was able to bring it out and just threaten the Umbreon with a big knockout. In that position, it was really tough for Hirofumi because of course he could switch the Tapu Lele out or Tapu Lele in into the Umbreon slot, but then that might just get knocked out by the Fairy MZ, so pretty difficult decision to make there. Uh, I think that's exactly how Nyoto needs to approach this matchup. He needs to conserve the Tapu Fini, bring it into a position to deal with the Umbreon, and I feel like the Pokemon choices were both quite strong from both players, and it really could have gone either way. I mean, that last game coming down really to the wire there, and uh, for example, had Groudon protected there, had the double not gone off, then uh, the game would be completely different. Really coming down to that pivotal turn, uh, to seeing you know what does a Groudon do on both players' end. And, and wow, wow, that was so, so close. That was also such masterful board position playing by both of those players. I Absolutely. Mean, Naoto seemed like his back was against the wall, but he was able, as you mentioned, to be able to get that top of Fini out onto the field at the right time with the ability to just go for a Twinkle Tackle, not risking being snarled at any point at all. And Hirofumi played exceptionally well as well, if you think about it. I mean, that Trick Room, even though a lot of his Pokemon are actually fast, uh, you know, he still was able to maintain a lot of damage and deal a lot of damage be with that Umbreon underspeeding almost everything over on Naoto's side of the field. Yeah, you know, I feel, I feel like the Umbreon, the Groudon, and the uh, Necrozma are still definitely the right Pokemon to bring in here. So the uh, question is, do you bring in the Choice Scarf Tapu Lele again? That doesn't fit very well into the Trick Room strategy if you're opting to go for that. And of course, Lunala can take Psychics pretty well. So if you do bring the Trick Room strategy again, maybe you prioritize trying to knock out the Lunala earlier on. So then you're free to kind of just click Psychic on everything. I think certainly could be viable. I mean, Kangaskhan definitely could make a lot of sense here into the matchup as well. So let's see. Nyoto is one game away from winning the World Championship, but Umbreon makes in its appearance once again. This time as a lead. Hirofumi leads Umbreon. Oh! Oh! And over on the other side of the field, Nyoto leads with Tapu Fini and the Lunala. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think having the Tapu Fini out against Umbreon while Trukram's not up and with no Snarl out is such great board positioning here from Nyoto. Being able to threaten with that Fairy MZ immediately into the Umbreon. 
Umbreon here pretty much forced to switch out if it does not want to get knocked out. Of course, you could switch out into something like the Groudon. That's probably the best possible option to take the Therium Z. Nyoto might, of course, predict that and not even go for it. We saw Moonguy's Beam, of course, does a lot of damage to the opposing Necrozma. Necrozma here won't be able to retaliate with too much damage on either of these Pokemon. Might want to try to set up a Trick Room, especially if you're trying to pivot into Groudon here. So Umbreon in a very, very awkward spot. Does not want to just feign to the Z-Move immediately, and I think it's pretty much forced to switch out. Yep, and again, that Groudon is probably the best switch to be able to take a resisted fairy type attack here as the turn progresses. Umbreon again forced to switch out. Doesn't want to risk getting one hit KO'd immediately, and there it is, the Groudon, as you mentioned, Aaron. Great call there, buddy. Groudon coming in, I think, really, pretty much the only option there. I, like, it switches in obviously quite nicely into any fairy type attacks. So the key question here is, did Nyoto maybe predict, and, predict this and not waste the Z-move? I think Hirofumi might have been going with this lead intention to try to bait out the Z-move because if you can get it out immediately, that's such a big threat out of the way. Yeah, and progressing with the rest of this turn, uh, Dustmane Necrozma, Photon guys are into that Lunala, breaking that Shadow Shield right there. Uh, not very effective damage at all, but... The important part is it does get some chip damage out on that field as Lunala uses Moon Geist Beam here, targeting down that Dustmane Necrozma, and again, that does a lot of damage right there. Not enough to quite get the one-hit KO, but still getting as much damage out. Oh! Oh, and here comes Nature's Madness! What a great play there. Doesn't get baited, doesn't use the Z-move. Of course, Umbreon there is going to switch out a lot of times, and even if it doesn't, you still get 50% of damage off, but great decision on Iota's end not to go for the Z-move. I think a lot of players might often tunnel vision in that position and just try to get that knockout immediately. Goes for a very, very safe Nature's Madness there, and getting that much damage off against Crowd on his screen. Iota definitely winning the damage trade off this first turn. Once again, recognizes, need to conserve top if we need to deal with the Umbreon in the back. Salman, such a great switch in here to reduce the firepower from Groudon, and yeah, the Shadow Shield was broken on Lunala's end, but it, what's Hirofumi able to do in terms of damage right now, especially given like Groudon is intimidated? Yeah, not that many uh, offensive options here for Hirofumi, as another Photon Geyser is used, oh no, sorry, an Ultra Burst here, as Ultra Necrozma takes the field, you're gonna get a lot of great stat boost there, and be able to dish a lot of damage, but instead, Hirofumi using this turn to just protect itself, uh, doesn't want to get hit, with another Moon Geist Beam as the Lunala uses that Moon Geist Beam into that slot. And here's a Fire Punch connecting with that Lunala, boosted by that Sunlight, dishing out some good, decent damage. Yeah, decent damage, but really nice to bring in the Salamence there for Intimidate. Salamence also just kind of an excellent Pokemon to have out right now, putting on a lot of pressure with Hyper Voice. I am curious to see how the speeds of the Salamence and the Ultra Necrozma here match up. Of course, Ultra Necrozma can get a very, very powerful Z-move off here. Might just be able to launch that into the opposing Salamence slot. Uh, but depending on how Salamence is trained, perhaps they can actually survive it. Obviously, what can go for something like a Hyper Voice or a Double Edge just to get a knockout. And Hirofumi actually going for the switch out here. Oh, but Nyoto reacting positively. Did he maybe predict this? Here is that Umbreon and... <sighs> Salamence now Mega Evolves, getting that air related ability as well as boosting its speed. One of the fastest Pokemon in the format, as well as being one of the hardest hitters in this format as well. And oh, a the Tailwind! Salamence using Tailwind, gonna double the speed of the Pokemon on Naoto side of the field as Lunala uses Moon Geist Beam here. Can get some great damage dealt onto the Groudon on Hero Fumi side. Hitting first. Wow! Oh, yeah, Groudon hangs on on Hero Fumi side though, and here's another Fire Punch, but again, those Intimidates are so important because Lunala hangs on. Yeah, so Hero Fumi at least has Umbreon out on the field right now, but Umbreon kind of doesn't want to go up against Pokemon that hits so hard. Yeah, you can get a Snarl off, yeah, you can get a Foul Play off, but Naito basically still has the Sapu Fini very healthy, and of course, Hirofumi's Restricted Pokemon in Groudon and the Ultra Necrozma are so low, any attack at this point will basically finish them off. And for Naito, his goal is basically to attack around the Umbreon. Yeah, Umbreon is annoying to deal with, and if you do damage, you can probably just heal it all the way back up. So you don't really want to target that slot right now, you kind of want to just prioritize targeting Umbreon's partner. And of course, for Hirofumi's end, probably wants to prioritize protecting whatever is next to Umbreon just to get some extra attacks off right now. Now, but I think Nyoto has played this game really, really well so far. Yeah, he's playing this board position game extremely well right here, saving that top of Fumi for later on as the Groudon on Hirofumi's side switches out. Doesn't want to get KO'd yet, and Hirofumi sends out uh, his own Salamence here with an Intimidate onto that one. I'm not going to matter too much. The Intimidate might matter on that Salamence depending on if it does know double edge or not as Lunala protects itself, doesn't want to take a foul play from the Umbreon end. Here is a Hyper Voice just going for consistent threat damage here, 
doing good damage to that Salamence and tripping away at that Umbreon. And there is that, uh, looks like it's, no, just a foul play right into that Lunala slot. Yeah, no, I think uh, Star might have missed the Salamence actually Ooh. there in Iotos then, so that's obviously a unfortunate That's unfortunate, miss. that's a bad miss. Yeah, yeah absolutely, but uh, of course, uh, Nyoto in a great position still. I mean, doesn't get knocked out by the foul play, gets a lot of free damage off against the opposing Salamence, and I think, once again, to reiterate, his strategy is basically to target around the Umbreon. If you do damage to it, it'll just be able to heal it all the way back up, so Hyper Boy is definitely a great spread move. Gets a little bit of chip damage onto Umbreon, but more importantly, gets damage onto the opposing partner. Of course, now the Salamence is intimidated, so potential double edge won't do very much damage, but uh, Nyoto basically just needs to conserve that top Wolfini, leave it for the end game to deal with the Umbreon and he will be able to knock it out very cleanly so uh, of course he hasn't shown his last Pokemon yet and if it is that Groudon will be able to put on a lot of pressure. Salamence you're probably wanting to reset that attack drop from the Intimidate switching out and uh, Tapofini actually coming in because it can take attacks from the opposing Salamence decently well. Yeah and Salamence on Hero Fumi's side switches out as well saving that Intimidate for later and the Groudon takes the kill but it is so heavily damaged right now any attack will even be able to get the KO. Besides the Nature's Madness, I guess, but uh, here comes the rest of the turn. How is this turn going to play out? Lunala is wide guard, preventing a possible Snarl, so great defensive uh, move right there to prevent oh. Snarl, but here's a foul play from that Umbreon into that Topofini. A critical hit, not going to matter much at all because of Topofini's low attack stat. Yeah, I definitely like the attempt there by both players. I think wide guard pretty much preventing the Snarl meeting leg. Now you do get the top of Fini out. You've got the Tailwind up. You've got the Fairy Z pressure off against the Umbreon, and nothing in the back of the team likes to take any Fairy type attacks. I mean, it's the uh, Ultra Necrozma and a Salamence, right? Like. Uh, the Moonblast just do super effective damage off against everything. Uh, Lunala, of course, can just go for a Moonguy's Beam off into the opposing Groudon slot. So, uh, Nyoto has definitely full offensive pressure this turn. The question is, does he want to commit the Z-move? And does Hirofumi maybe expect him to not go for the Z-move? Maybe take the Moonblast and go for something like a Snarl? However, I mean, regardless, I think Nyoto really has a lot of control right now. Are there any protects? No, no just no at all. Lunala uses Moonguy's Beam here. Most likely gonna target down that ground, does target down that ground, gets the KO. Critical hit again, that did not matter at all. Top of Fini now gets to make a move, and is it is it a the Z move? Oh, yes. oh, Connecting such a great that Umbreon, no snarls at all. We've seen it do so much damage to that Umbreon already, and this might be two quick knockouts for Nayato here. What a game this is. <laughs> this Top of Fini is out on the field at the right time. Both games so far, being able to deal with this Umbreon that would otherwise give Naoto such a bad matchup here. And there goes Umbreon, a big knockout there. And now Naoto is only two KOs away from becoming the world champion here, Aaron. Yeah, he hasn't even shown his last Pokemon. I feel like he has played this game perfectly. Right from the get-go, amazing lead, potentially calling the Umbreon lead there, putting on so much pressure. And uh, a lot of how he's played this game is kind of methodical, right? You kind of distribute damage around. You don't just go for big knockouts because the team is uh, quite a bulky team. So kind of chip away, get a Nature's Madness off here, do a little bit of Hyper Voice or Moon Guy's Beam there. And the key thing is eventually you put yourself into a position where you can just close out the game. It's still not over. Of course, Hiro Fumi has two very strong Pokemon here in the Mega Salamence and the Ultra Necrozma. Tapu Fini has committed its Z move. Of course, doesn't have a way to recover. The opposing Salamence, of course, has something like Hyper Voice could definitely go for that, but you do have to watch out for, of course, the uh, Wide Guard that we saw revealed. And so Tapu Fini is obviously very, very good against these Dragon-type Pokemon. I think Nyoto might want to try to bait out the Z-move from the Ultra Necrozma, maybe go for a Protect here on Tapu Fini. Uh, he still, of course, has two Pokemon in the back, one of them being that Salamence. Yeah, as Salamence on Hero Fumi's side, Mega Vols now getting that air Aerolade ability. And here we go. Yep, Tapu Fini protect. protects itself here. Doesn't want to take a possible uh, light that burns the sky from the uh, Ultra Necrozma over on the other side. And there's a double edge from that Mega Salamence connects with that Lunal and gets the KO. So Hirofumi clawing back here. Does he commit the Z move? Oh, there it is. He does. That's a very, very big bait there. Being able to get that out means that I, it's a lot more difficult for Hirofumi to just get an effective one hit KO here on Slotop of Fini. So very, very nice protect there. It was a really, really tough mind game, I think, from both players then, but Nyoto definitely getting the better end of the trade, I think, had uh, Hirofumi called it correctly. Uh, he'd actually still not be in the worst of positions, but Nyoto having an early lead, kind of running away with it, and he still has one Pokemon, of course, waiting in the back, but not that Salamence, presumably Groudon. However, just being able to get the Z-move out here, that's the strongest move on Hirofumi's team. Uh, very, very nice resource management there from Nyoto's end. Has, uh, 
That's a very, very big move committed. Yeah, it's still some chip damage uh, through that protect on that top of Fini. Uh, wondering if it will put it in range for a Photon Geyser to try to get the KO next turn. You know, this is a more of an offensive top of Fini, so it probably does not invest too much in bulk. Although, you know, Top of Fini is naturally a bulky Pokemon, so how much is that Photon Geyser going to be able to do the next turn as Naoto now tries to see how he can easily close this game out and win this World Championship title here? Yeah, for Hirofumi, at least he has the two fastest Pokemon on his team and two of the strongest Pokemon with uh, Groudon coming in here. The main thing here is that we've seen that this Groudon actually carries that Dragon Claw. Dragon Claw actually will be able to just get a knockout onto either of these Pokemon. And the thing here from Hirofumi is that, like, for example, you won't be able to just knock out both Pokemon here. I think Nyoto most certainly will be able to get a relatively free knockout onto one of the opposing Pokemon. And because he has the Pokemon advantage, all he needs to do is basically tra trade Pokemon each turn. For Hirofumi, I mean, you can go for, for example, like a double edge on the top of Fini, but then the Photon Geyser won't be enough to knock out the Groudon, so maybe you hope for a Hyper Voice critical hit, but no, it's just the double edge. There's a double edge from that Salmon connects with that top of Fini. Top of Fini gets KO'd. Now, what is this Ultra Necrozma going to be able to do to this Groudon here? Or is Groudon just going to be able to feel the deal here for Nyoto? Here's the Earth Power. Earth is power. There a critical oh, hit? How much damage does oh, How much damage? Groudon hangs on! Groudon hangs on. There's a special defense drop right there as Groudon now moves here. Uses Fire Punch. Oh, no, the Dragon Call connects with that Ultra Necrozma and gets the KO. So, so close to knocking out the Groudon there. But the way it's trained, the bulk allows it to survive. And now it is a 2v1. One matchup. I mean, Nyoto, yeah, just needed to get one knockout here. Salamence comes out still so very, very healthy. There is pretty much no way here, I think, for Hero for me to be able to win this one. Even a Hyper Voice critical hit won't be enough to get a knockout there. His win condition that last turn was pretty much, I need to get a critical hit. This is no it. critical hit comes out. The last turn of the game, most likely, and there is a Hyper Voice from the Salamence on Hero Fumi's side. Gets the KO on the ground, but here comes Nyoto Salamence with an attack. Here's a double edge, and Nyoto Mizobuchi is your 2019 Pokemon Video Game World Champion. Clean 2-0 set, what an exciting set between both of these players. Wow. Amazing play, amazing display of trying to maintain that board position, being able to keep that offensive up, and Hirofumi had his back to the wall the entire way in game two. I am here with our world champion. How does it feel to be called the world champion? You it's been my dream for quite some time to become world champion, so to finally do it feels amazing. I know that you prepared so diligently for this event, and you felt confident coming in. Tell everyone about your journey getting here. なんか今までのあの道とかなんかあの経験したことでまあ優勝者になったんだけどもうあのそれを語ってくださいみたいな。あ、そうですね。あのここまで来るのは本当にあの険しい道であの皆さん強い人たちばっかりだったのであの。<
congratulations on your hard work. Let's hear it one more time for our world champion.